Okay. Good, I think it's just about good afternoon, everybody. Um, good to see you. Here. A little bit nervous, I must be honest with you. I've got a referee in my first rugby game of the season at 2.30. I've been refereeing rugby for years and years, but the first game of the season, you're always <laughs> convinced yourself that you've forgotten all the rules. So if I start limbering up halfway through, you'll know why. I've just gone for a maths lesson as well. We're doing percentage changes, and I thought just trying to spice it up a little with year 11, kind of grumpy year 11. We, we decided to give teachers pay rises or pay cuts and work out their new salary. They, they loved it. They absolutely loved it. Mr McMillan got a 9% pay cut for losing a calculator. <laughs> Mr Goodrich got a 12% pay cut for losing a kid on DOV. And they were busy kind of working out his new, his new salary. It was really good. One. I really enjoyed it. Um, I just want to tell you a little bit about um, the aim of these parent talks. We've got a series of nine talks through the year. Um, Education change. There was a time in education where school's attitude was parents kind of butt out, leave it to us, we know what we're doing, and we're going to deliver your child at the end of five years. And that's not the way we want to do it now. It's certainly not the way I want to do it. We want to share information with you as openly as we possibly can. With some of the challenges of bringing up teenagers, we want to share those challenges and talk about it, because you as parents will be wrestling with the same issues that we as a school are wrestling with. Obvious examples of things like social media, games, uh, the social scene, alcohol, things like that. You know, it's, there's no easy answer to this stuff. And we can we can share some information and then have a kind of Q and A and talk about it. Um, today's about UCAS. Now, some of you, when I went through, it was UCA and PCAS. Some of you may have older children, you know a lot about this, but some of you really, it's been a long time and you don't know how it works. And all we're going to do really today is give you a half an hour either reminder of exactly how the system works, what the children have to do, and what you can do to support best support at home, really. I'm going to give a kind of parish note that the next parent talk is on the 13th of October at 12 o'clock in here, where I'll be talking about character education. It's something I did deliver to talk last year. One or two of you may have gone to that talk, I'm not sure, but, but you're very, very welcome. Uh, it's it's uh, something that I believe in and we, we, that we're pushing here at Christ College. So I can share, share it with you. Um, we've got, you probably noticed Mr Hill there on a camera. Um, <laughs> we're filming this tour. Now, Mr Chandler, I told, I told him this morning we were filming it. Poor Mr Chandler. Um, that, just so you know why, our, our international parents need to know this information just as much as us. And poor old them, they're stuck at various parts around the world. And what we're going to do with these parent talks, we're going to film them, and then the, with the beauty of YouTube, we're going to upload it on Monday, and then they will be able to hear the information as well. So, uh, but if you're particularly camera shy, you can see it there in the middle, just kind of to move out of the way a bit. That, it's going to be about half an hour-ish, and then Q&A. So we'll be done within, comfortably within the hour, and then you can go and watch some sport. Okay? Yeah, thank you very much. Mr. John. Thanks very much, Gareth. Gareth said he <laughs> uh, before we start, a couple of apologies. One, I've got my, my smart term sore throat, so I'm sure to soldier on. Um, the other thing, there, there isn't a handout for this, mainly because a lot of it is links to various websites and things like that. So um, rather than produce a handout, I'm very, very happy to email details with all the links on if you want to, to, um, to have it in that form. Uh, right, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Paul Chandler. I've been coordinating UCAS applications here since about 2004, I think. Um, and today's talk will try to answer three questions. Now, this is where I have to hope the technology works. Um, so there's, there's me, there's my email. It's the standard school email. So if you ever want to email me about anything to do with careers, then, then please do. Uh, right, we're going to try to answer three questions. First one, what is UCAS? The second one, what do we do here at CCB to guide pupils through applying to university? And third one, what can you as parents do? Um, we're talking about students will go on to university. Um, obviously there are other options, and if you need more information about other options, then also get in touch. Uh, right, so what, what is UCAS? It's a commonly held belief that if your parents turn up at university with a nice blank checkbook and casually ask how much the new law library is going to cost, that you're probably going to get a place at whatever course you want. 
Um, that may or may not be true, but for, for most of us who are less financially secure, then the only way to get onto a university course in the UK is through UCAS. And UCAS is the University and Colleges Admissions Service. Those of us, like Gareth said, who are of a particular age will remember not UCAS, but we will remember applying to universities through UCA, UCCA, which was the university's central, co central council on admissions, or applying to polytechnics using PCAS, the Polytechnic Central Admission System. Um, and you had to fill out a paper form. Did anyone, did anyone do that? Oh, yes. And you had to fill out a paper form. And I remember the fear of the paper form, getting the piece of paper and being told, this is it, you get it once, don't make a mistake, you won't get another one. And you had to fill everything in in pencil and you had to write it as small as you could to get it all on there. And then you went over it with pen and then you rubbed it all out and then you handed it in and you hoped there was nothing wrong with it. How much less stressful it must be for our people today where you draft and redraft everything on on the computer. So, 1992, UCA and PCAS merged when most of the polytechnics were given university status. And out of that came UCAS. So UCAS now handles all the admissions to universities and to conservatoire. So if you've got your son or daughter is uh, wanting to do a practical music qualification, then conservatoire come under the UCAS umbrella now. And um, also, 2015, the Amsterdam Fashion Academy became the first non-UK university, or non-UK educational establishment, which was admitted to UCAS. The key word from UCA, for me, was the word central. And this is a word which has now been dropped from the UCAS. Uh, but it's still a key word, I think. And the thing about UCAS is that it is envied worldwide as being a one-stop shop. It is um, the central clearinghouse for all university admissions in the UK. And you can apply for up to five courses to five different places, and it will cost you £24, which actually is amazing value. If you think about the American system, even now with the common application system, which has been introduced in America, generally you have to pay an application fee to every place you apply to, and there are also different forms to fill out. Similarly with Hong Kong universities, each Individual universities, so Hong Kong University, um, HKUST, the Chinese University, the University of Hong Kong, they all have their own systems, they all have their own forms to fill out, and they're all slightly different. Certainly, from my point of view, I'd much rather do a dozen UCAS applications than two or three Hong Kong applications because they're very, very fiddly. So, as far as I can see, for the user, for the applicant, the UCAS system actually, in spite of all of its complexities, is actually quite straightforward. A bit more about UCAS. Although it operates as an independent charity, UCAS is still a business, and obviously as a business needs to run as a business. Having said that, you know, my personal experience from serving on the UCAS Service Advisory Group for a number of years, I can honestly say that as an organisation, UCAS is a very responsive organisation and it's very, very quick to respond to the needs of the users, the needs of the applicants, the careers advisors and those that support them, like themselves. When UCAS were told by a number of careers advisors that there were some universities were bending the rules on admissions, and were actually changing their application requirements mid-cycle. And a number of us um, mentioned this to UCAS. Instantly, UCAS got onto those universities, gave them a slap on the wrist, and it all stopped. 
Similarly, when a number of um, a number of careers advisors ask that data for you for our applicants for our for the status of our applicants was available not just monthly but perhaps fortnightly. We made that request to UCAS and within a couple of weeks we were actually getting that data not fortnightly but actually weekly. So they do, they are very, very conscious that they need to try to look after the people that, that in effect pay their wages. So, for me, I think the UCAS works here. You know, the UCAS itself is actually very good value for money. So the UCAS website, we'll have a look at the UCAS website in a minute. I'll take you through a little bit of it. That's the main, the main UCAS website, UCAS.com. It is a one-stop shop. So um, has anyone been on to the UCAS website and had a look? Have you, have you spent hours getting lost down rabbit holes? Because that's what you can do, and that's what you need to do. Really. So it's a one-stop shop, which means it can be quite daunting. Um, it is quite intuitive, and once you work out where you want to be and what's the most relevant bit, then you can, you can generally get through. So as I said, UCAS has a stated aim. It wants to be the go-to resource for everything post-school. And um, I've been to, to meetings with people from UCAS, and they've actually been upfront about that. They've said, we want people to come to the UCAS website for everything, not just universities, but for everything else to do with moving on from school. So the website contains a huge amount of information on many different things, so it can feel rather busy and intimidating. Now, if the technology works, <coughs> that should go to the website. Indeed it does. So it's, it's a huge website, really. And there are loads and loads of things on there. Loads of different bits. I think the, the key to, to the UCAS website really is to think a bit about the options at the top. So obviously for university we're talking about undergraduate things, um, but there's also information about other things as well. Um, particularly good is the alternatives bit. So it looks quite busy, but use the buttons at the top and you can just pare it down to a manageable size, really. Okay, but I think it is a very good first port of call. So, as I said, primarily it's, it's geared towards undergraduate applications, but it has lots of useful information about things in general. Um, if we just have a little look at what it says about alternatives. Then other alternatives. They have lots of information about things like apprenticeships and internships and some good ideas about what to do for gap years, if anyone wants to do a gap year and whether you, could, whether you should try and do it on your own, whether you should use an organisation. So there's lots of information, there are lots of links on there. Um, with apprenticeships, it's not just general advice, there is actually the facility to see to see what apprenticeships are available at the moment. So it's, it's not just general advice, there is there's real time, real time advice there. So, go back to, go back to that for a minute. Okay, so. There's lots of advice also about how to choose a degree course. And you then have things like student finance. And it takes you through, basically takes you through the whole, basically takes you the whole journey. And also, it's quite useful for the students themselves to just get a flavour of what they're going to do. Uh, my daughter went off to Manchester yesterday to study biomedical science. Um, but the beauty of the system now, the beauty of social media now, is that she's already in contact with some people on her course. She was in contact with some people in her halls of residence before she got there. Um, 
And some of the, a lot of the information on the UCAS website is good for just demystifying things, just making things a bit less scary for people. Right, sorry. So, one of the annoying things about the about the UCAS website is actually the fact that they have to fund it, and by having advertisements, by hosting advertisements, they actually get an awful lot of revenue. Um, UCAS Media is very, very big business, so sometimes the uh, sometimes the advertisements can get in the way. So the thing to do with the UCAS website, basically, is to sit yourself down and you've got a quiet half an hour and just go through it, just, just have a play with it really. Go through, click on things which look interesting, they will take you down various routes and when you get to something that you're interested in, keep clicking away and then gradually go back up to where you need to be to, presumably, to undergraduate um, admissions. Right, so, the main thrust of the, the UCAS website is undergraduate admissions, and that is what we that is what we tend to focus on because that is what the vast majority of our students do. So, what do we do? Right, we have a careers timetable for the, for the sick form, which we certainly try to stick to. Um, the careers, oh, sorry, I'm sure we'll there. the um, careers interview part of that, I give a one-to-one -one 35, 40 minute interview to everybody in the lower sixth. Um, I've not started them yet because we've only just started the term, but in the next couple of weeks I'll be starting to roll out those interviews. So everyone gets a one-to-one -one interview to try to focus them on what, what they're thinking. Um, and then um, I, I will send a link to this, so don't worry. Uh, so in the in the lower six, we gradually build things up towards the application until we get to the stage in the upper six, obviously, again, in the upper six, where the application needs to be sent off. I might come back to that later. that people don't know what they want to do at all. I feel that we give actually very, very good support through teachers and tutors, and I think that our students are able to make really quite well-informed choices. Um, we find that as the lower sixth progresses, some people come into the lower sixth knowing exactly what they want to do, exactly where they want to go, exactly what they need to get there. Others are not so sure. Don't be put off by the name, but there is something called Fast Tomato, which we have a subscription to. And Fast Tomato is very, very useful if you have someone who really doesn't have what they want to do. Um, it takes you through various psychometric um, testing packages. What happens is that uh, when people are in year nine, we sign them up to Fast Tomato and then they can go back to that and they can revisit it as much as they want to if things change and they want to have a bit more detail. And I'll just quickly whiz through the site itself. Um, as I said, the name is, is a bit off-putting. But there are various sort of very small scale things. You know, what are you interested in? What do you want to do? Do you like the outdoors? Do you like the indoors? Do you want to work in an office? That sort of thing. And then there is a, a, a more in-depth series of questions, which will take about 70 minutes for most people. And you end up with various career suggestions. And then, you know, that links into what actually these careers are. You can use it for thinking about GCSE options later on. And then the business end, as far as we're concerned today, is what you can do with it afterwards. So this is something that um, 
the students can use themselves. If there's anyone who comes into the lower sixth who really doesn't know what they want to do, um, then I will guide them towards this. Um, the curriculum for life started today, and I had a session today, and one of the things I did with brand new lower sixth was we looked at Pastor Marte. And we, yeah, well, I'd say introduced them to Pastor Marte. Um, so that's quite useful. There's also something called SACU. Uh, SACU was set up by a number of people who used to work for UCAS. And they thought that they could set up um, a, an advisory service of various kinds. Uh, they obviously were not particularly um, creative, so they chose to write UCAS backwards and they came up with SACU. Um, there is a version of SACU where you have to subscribe and pay lots of money for it, but there are a number of things on SACU which are, which are free. So, and this is probably the, this is the, uh, another thing which I, which I steer people towards. So there's a free careers quiz which is quite useful for people, again, to, to have a little think about what they're doing, what they want to do. And, um, and an A-level match tool. So if we get to the stage where you've already got your A-levels chosen, and you think, um, yeah, right, well, I chose them. Now, what do I do with them? So these are quite useful things. These, these are sort of free aspects of SACU. Other things you would have to, have to pay for, which we don't. I mentioned just now our curriculum for life which we've just started. Um, and I'm really looking forward to this, actually. It's a, I think it's a fantastic venture. Um, so you, we, we have just, we just started, oh, that's come up again. I've, I've just done this with, um, with our current lower sixth, or with a group of 14 of our current lower sixth. Um, Matthew McMillan, who has just joined me helping out with careers this year, he did a session, and then I did another session with them. So, with the Curriculum for Life, we've got practical advice about careers and university applications. Um, there are also various talks that are coming in. Um, so, from a careers point of view, what we're doing in the first term, we're doing Choosing the Right Course. Second term, we're starting to focus on personal statement writing. And then in the third term, we're thinking about where all this leads eventually and getting a job and becoming an employee. And that's what we're doing for the, for the lower sixth this year. And I'm quite excited about that. I think that will be a really good way to, to focus people on things. And also, as part of the external, the external speaker, side of the curriculum for life, we'll have someone coming in to give more advice on personal statements, interviews, all those sorts of things. Uh, we also have an annual universities fair, and uh, this year's university fair is actually this Thursday coming. Um, so I could add uh, the details of that are we have around about 20 universities <coughs> Representative from, representatives from around about 20 universities are going to be coming and they will have stands in the sports hall um, during the morning myself and Jonathan Hardwick will be talking to our upper sixth and we will be going through the, the nitty gritty bits of UCAS the UCAS application that people get wrong and we will be talking a bit, in a bit more depth about personal statements because we're all in the process of writing personal statements now and Jonathan will do stuff, stuff about interviews as well. Then we'll have the stands at the sports hall, and we have pupils coming in from other schools as well. We have pupils coming in from Crickow, and from Grenoble, and from Brecon High School, and from Bilf. So they'll come in, and they will access that as well. And um, then in the afternoon, 1.30, we have Barry Clark, who is a, an old friend of the school, 
coming from Swansea University. Barry is, is head of UK student recruitment at Swansea, um, and he's uh, going to come in and, and give a talk, which I, th I think the title he said is Anthropology, that's insects, isn't it? Which is going to be 30 years of Barry's wisdom from overseeing um, degree applications and giving careers advice. And um, so, yeah, that, that's happening on this Thursday coming. If, uh, if you want some details, then I'll get back to you. Well, okay, right, so back to this. Assuming, assuming that um, people do want to apply to degree courses, which is what, as I said, the vast majority of our students do, then they have to register with UCAS Apply. Uh, I can't really show you much about Apply because obviously it's got live data on it at the moment, which is actually quite sensitive. So I can't really show you that. Um, but um, I can show you our higher education guide, which is something that all the lowest it get. And, um, oh, this goes a lot better. And the higher education guide is something I produce to help them with getting through everything. So there are various, various <coughs> sections on, on choosing a course. Um, section 2 gives you the, the nuts and bolts of the UPAS application with various do's and don'ts. So make sure you get your exam boards right, make sure you put all your yeah, make sure you put all of your qualifications on, including your music exams and your lambda and those things. Some advice about personal statement, some talk about personal about points as well, various other things, and probably in some ways the most important bit is the key data bit, which is when things need to be done. So I'll come on to that in a minute. <coughs> in terms of the actual process, UCAS goes live in mid-May. So UCAS Apply goes live in mid-May. In mid -May. So what happens is I set everything up then, I sit down the lower sick and we all get registered. They register through the school. Because they register through the school, that means everything is nice and streamlined then. So it means that their tutors and I can look very, very hard at their applications. And we can see all the detail of the applications, we can pick out any mistakes. It means we can also see how far along they've got, so we can give them a, a gentle kick to, to keep them going. And. Um, what then happens is that we are able to, to add the reference in a very simple and easy to, easy to access way. Um, right. So, there's a little bit about the, the higher education guide. Here, here are the dates, basically. If you're applying to Oxford or to medicine or veterinary science or dentistry, then there is an early application for those. So you have to submit your application to UCAS by the 15th of October. And that means that not just the student's application, but all the reference and everything needs to be done. So if people are applying to to Oxford or to medicine or veterinary science or to dentistry, then I ask them to get things done by about the 28th of September. That gives us time to go through everything, check it all, and make sure we get the application on. For everyone else, we try to get the applications done, or we try to get the, the students part of the applications done by half term. Um, There are lots and lots of schools, lots of independent schools, will say that they get everything done and dusted by half term. Um, and, or at least that's what the headmasters say. If you talk to the careers advisors, they will say that very, very few schools actually realistically get everything done and dusted by half term. We try to get everything done by then. 
Certainly, we try to get all the applications sent off by the end of the business <coughs> term. So, if people can get their applications sorted by half term, that's, that's lovely. That makes life so much easier for us. Um, <coughs> oh, sorry. The way it works, when the application is completed by the student, they press pay send. That application doesn't go anywhere. It just gets flagged up to me to say they think they've finished. So I will then go through the application with a fine sort of code. And I will go through and, and tell them of anything which I think needs to be sorted out. And um, anything which needs to be corrected. I'm, I'm very much a pedant. So when it comes to things like grammatical mistakes, spelling mistakes, um, small things that they've missed out, so they might have forgotten to put on their grade 8 violin, those sorts of things, I pick up on those things. And I send them back to them and we can, we can have another go. <coughs> Sorry. All the time, up to that process, their tutors will be helping them in terms of making sure they're getting the application moving along, making sure they're getting their personal statement sorted out, drafting, redrafting the personal statement. The personal statement is the thing that which students are always very, very edgy about. Um, it shouldn't be as much of a deal as they often make it, but it is something that you, you need to get right. Uh, but our students do get it right. They get a lot of support from, from teachers and tutors. They get a lot of support from home as well, and they get it right. <coughs> so running alongside, running alongside this bit here, when the applications come in, I will have academic references which the student, uh, which the subject leaders will have written. They are then collated. They go to the academic tutor of your son or daughter and they pull together a reference. One thing I think we do very, very well here is we, we get a really good reference. And it's important, and that the tutors know that it's important, that the reference should always complement the personal statement. The rules for the personal statement and the reference are the same. You can only write 47 lines of Times New Roman point size 12 or 4,000 characters. And once you've done your 47 lines or your 4,000 characters, anything else you write just disappears completely. And that's the rule for the personal statement. It's also the rule for the reference. <coughs> so, Quite often, there might be something that one of the, um, that the applicant once mentioned that they can't fit into the personal statement. So if they talk to their tutor, then the tutor can mention it. And the personal statement and the reference, I feel, the way we do it here, that they work together very, very, very well. Um, when it comes to the reference, I read through all the references as well. Because sometimes, there might be mistakes on the I also upload the predicted grades. Um, predicted grades, again, are something which are, which are done by subject leaders. They submit the predicted grades. The, the rule with predicted grades is the predicted grades should be realistic, yet aspirational. Um, and you know, the, the, the benchmark we tend to use is if there is a 10% chance of somebody getting an A-star at A-level, then we should predict an next time. Because at the end of the day, it's up to them to work to that level. So predicted grades, I think, again, we get predicted grades right. Uh, you will hear a lot of, you know, you have lots of horror stories um, which are put out by government and, and other organisations which say you know, the, the vast majority of predicted grades on UCAS forms are overinflated. Ours aren't. And I think, and I, I, I know this from talking to admissions tutors, that actually 
there are some schools where an admissions tutor will say, yep, I can trust that school. If they say this person is an A-star candidate, they are an A-star candidate. There are other schools where they will look at the predicted grades and they will think, um, well, maybe, maybe not. But I think that we get these things right. And I, I hand on heart, I would say that in the time that I've been going in the past, I don't think we've ever sent off a, an application which has been work, which has worked against a candidate. Anything in the reference must be honest but upbeat. It must be supportive. We can't write anything negative. Those days are gone. Those days of you know, don't don't bother up offering a place to this person because they're useless. We can't do that anymore. I don't think we ever want to either, to be honest. But uh, but the reference is supportive, accurate, and true. Okay. So when they choose their courses, so I'll just go back to this. When they choose their courses, it's important that um, it's important that that your sons and daughters are realistic. Um, one of the most important things you can do is to make sure they're grounded, make sure they actually do know what they can do. Um, and really good source of information that we've got is Heap, which is this thing here. Uh, Brian Heap, almost 50 years ago, decided that he would get together all the information about university courses, produce a book, and he then would be able to sell it for the best part of £40 a copy, which is what we have to pay for it. Um, this is really, really good though, because it tells you exactly what the grade offers are. Um, what we do with this is I get a copy of this for, um, I get one for myself, one for Mr McMillan, one which we can give out to students under strict instructions not to lose it. Um, I also give a copy to the head and to Mr Bush and um, Mr Blackland, they share a copy. And then what I've just done is that Heat 2018 I've now distributed to the houses. So those copies have gone to houses so that there is a, a copy in houses of something which is pretty much up to date. So that's a really, really good, useful thing. There is also an online version of that which all the students are registered with. One of the things that I do with them, and I've just done it today with the new, some of the new lower sick, is to register with the online. Okay, so <coughs> going back to, to when we get the applications in, if we can get applications in at round about half term of the Michaelmas term, and they can then get sent off, the beauty of that is that then people get offers before Christmas, which is fantastic for their morale, and from my point of view is brilliant, because it gives a real kick up the backside to those people that haven't got their applications in, because they can see their friends are getting offers. So that's what we try to do. Um, after the application has been sent off, then there is a thing called UCAS track, which again I, I can't really show you because of the, the sensitivity of the information on it. Um, and actually, yes, I could show you last year's, but it's just about to drop out anyway. Um, so when it gets sent off, the students go to UCAS track, they can see how things are going, they can see what offers they've got, we can see that as well, and we can then guide them through things. And then, basically, it's waiting to see what happens on results day. And then on results day, uh, various members of staff can be in, we can give them any help they need. The vast majority of our students will get into their third or their insurance choice. Occasionally somebody has to go through clearing, mainly because they've changed their mind about what they want to do. Um, we've had a couple of people that have got better results than, than they expected and they've gone through adjustment, which is sort of clearing upwards. But that's actually quite rare that we have that. Um, right, so what can you do? Um, you can have a look at websites. There's obviously the UCAS website. There are websites for all the universities. Uh, I just happen to choose this one because that's my old university. Um, so the university websites, they're basically all the same but all different, in that they generally give you all the same level of information, 
but they do it in a different way. So um, it's a question really of just question really of just playing with websites, having a little look, and seeing what you want to do. Um, student finance obviously is something that is very important for all of us, and that's something where you can give, well, you have to give a huge amount of support because this is this is the area that you need to deal with. Um, so student finance, depending on where you live, we have Student Finance Wales, who we deal with particularly. Uh, there's obviously Student Finance England, uh, Student Finance Scotland, and the all come under the Student Loans Company umbrella. Um, student Finance, um, I, I had to do it this year for my daughter, and it took about 20 minutes actually. It was remarkably easy. Um, so, but it does need doing, and it does need doing by April, that sort of time. Something else you can do, I think the key thing that you can do is just to, to be engaged, to really be interested in what your sons and daughters are doing. Um, be really engaged, be interested in, in what they're doing, um, and think about the things that they don't think of. Um, so, you know, for example, we assume, sometimes we assume that, that cities might be dangerous. We assume that rural settings are safe. But it might be the case that um, if there's a university in a rural setting, then, then getting out to accommodation could be a bit more of a difficulty than, than being in a city. Um, so yeah, there are certain things that, that you can put a, an extra slant on for, for, your, for your sons and daughters. Um, Please keep on top of deadlines with them. Please also read through drafts of personal statements and things like that. Um, and yeah, you can check them as well. Because they don't always see what they've got wrong. But often you do, we do, other people do. A really small point, well it sounds a small point, is if you move house, if you move house, or if you change your address, yeah, you change your, your email, you change your, your house address or your email address or your phone. Make sure that your sons and daughters actually let you cast know that that's happened. Because it's, it's very, very difficult to get in touch with you if nobody knows where you live. Um, here's, this is sort of, sort of funny, but not funny. Um, you can encourage your your sons and daughters to use a sensible email address. We say to, to the students, if you if you are a boarder, so you're here most of the time, then use your school email address. But don't forget to change it with UCAS when you leave, which is a very, very simple process. Um, but we say if you you know, if if you're not a boarder, if you're a day person, or if you're going home very often, you can check your email easily and whatever. Then use use a personal email address. Um, a few years ago, I had one applicant, and I, I took him to one side, and I said, yeah, that email address, really, really funny. Absolutely hilarious. But maybe, drunk on vodka 96 <laughs> is not the email address you want to be sharing with the business students. <laughs> so, okay, small thing. Um, open days. Open days are one of those things that I think are, are invaluable. Um, there's lots of advice about open days on the UCAS website. There's also this thing called opendays.com as well. Um, open days are something where obviously you can be very, very um, supportive because you can get them there. Um, I think when I went to university, there were hardly any parents ever went to open days. I think people just got on a train and got there. Now, students, as I know, universities are very, very geared up to parents. They're expecting parents to turn up. They will put things on for parents. There will be parent talks while, um, while the applicants are going off looking around the campus. Mm. So, by all means, do go. Really, really useful sessions. Um, Quite a, a new website, which is which is uh, come on the scene, is um, is this one, which is Take Me to Uni. Has anyone come across that at all? It's um, 
it's useful in that it's not always easy to get to open those. And take me to uni.com is a, a, a car sharing, so almost like a social media type. So you can say, yeah, I'm going, because often some of our, yeah, often our, our people might go together, might share transport to go together. Uh, but this, you can put you in touch with other people in, in the area who are going to open this. Uh, so that might be quite useful. Right, so, to finish off, there, there's a lot of things, you know, there's lots out there, there's lots of information out there. If only, if only, it was all gathered together in one nice, simple, easy to find place. And again, UCAS have come up tops. And here is the, the UCAS, this is the, oh, hang on, can I get the top of it, sorry. And here is the, the UCAS guide for parents, guardians and carers. Uh, which is fairly easy to find on the UCAS website, and I will email it to everyone. Um, and this really gives you just about everything you need to. Hang on, can't get that to it. And this gives you just about everything you need to you need to think about. So it's well worth having a look at. And um, that is about it from me. So. Are there any questions? <coughs> I'm sorry it was a whistle stop talk. <laughs> There's a lot to get to. Sorry. Um, I was just wondering when should we aim for our open days if we're parents of our six? Is there an extra one? <coughs> um, uh, it, it, it partly depends on how far along the process your sons and daughters are. I mean, because there's no point going to an open day unless it's a place you really want to go to. So I think the, the, if if you if you look at the open day um, the open day availability, um, then I think to get some, get them in in the lowest if you can. But it may be that they're not that far down the road yet. And I think that's something that we need to think about. So don't, don't panic. Don't panic about how far down the road people are. Um, but I think yeah, lower sick is good. There are some universities who don't particularly like open days. Um, so places like Durham, they're much more keen on applicant days. So they will say, you know, don't don't come on an open day, apply to us, get an offer, and then come. And the other thing with open days, there are loads and loads of virtual tours. So it's not the end of the world if people can't get away to open days. There are, there are ways of, of doing an open day without physically being there. Um, I'd advise not too many open days as well. I do a lot of your homework at home. Good one or two. Three. Yeah. Some people end up going to about six or seven. Okay. So you're missing two at school as well, being boring and headmaster. Yeah, that's two, true. Two, about two or three. Yeah. yeah. yeah sorry. What's your attitude to how to support um, students to apply after the results? Oh, sorry, I forgot to say that. Yeah, <laughs> right. Okay. If um, uh, what happens is, is if they if they haven't applied before they leave, then um, before they leave, I will give them the latest version of the higher education guide, and in that there is the, the buzzword. And there's a school buzzword which I set every year. And so what they then do, they go to UCAS, go on to apply, and they, they register, and it says, have you got a buzzword? And they put the buzzword in, and that means they then come onto our system. Uh, and the beauty of that is that you know, I can then give them as much support as I can in terms of checking everything through. Um, and the reference is so much easier. Uh, so yeah, so so if you if they apply post results, then that's fine. And we we sometimes get people that've been gone three or four years that do that actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, two two years ago when we went through this, it was very useful for UCAS to use the UCAS code for the course because yes. our daughter at that point knew exactly what she wanted to do. I can't find any way of doing that of doing that search now for our son where you might find a course that you think, oh that's really good, get the right mix and feeding that into the search engine and see where else does exactly that. GF13, yeah. for example. And I just I just wondered whether I was missing something. Um, off the top of my head, I don't know. No, it was very I, useful. I can go away, have a, yeah. go away and have a little look. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so the, 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 there are these arcane things, like the course codes, which mm. are sometimes quite difficult to, to find, aren't they? Mm. 
Um, let me go away and have a look. And I can get back to you. No, that was a foot. Sorry, what was that foot? <laughs> <What's that? laughs> <laughs> Paul, are you going to be around for a little bit? Because there's any individual questions? Yeah, yeah, sure. You yeah. can hang around. Yeah, I'll wrap it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, sorry it was so long. <laughs> there we go. Paul, thank you very much. Thank you.